Hey guys, and welcome to the video. My name's Amanda and I'm a second year vet student. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to study in vet school and different study methods that I feel like really worked for me and ones that I feel like were honestly a waste of time and I wouldn't recommend. One of the questions that I get asked so often is how to study in vet school because it can be a very overwhelming thing. And honestly, I had no idea where to start either. My first year was filled with a lot of trial and error with different study methods and trying to find what really worked best and what allowed me to really understand the content. So that's why I thought I would make this video and I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the study methods that I feel like were a waste of time and that I would not recommend. And I'm also going to talk to you guys about three different classes, anatomy, physics, physiology and clinical medicine because I use different study methods for each one of those classes. So we will walk through each one of those classes and I will let you guys know which study methods I feel like were really beneficial for each one. Now before we get into the video, I did want to give a brief disclaimer. Everybody is going to study differently and the study methods that might work for me may not actually work for you. But with that being said, I hope I can give you guys at least some ideas if you're looking to try out some new methods. Another thing that's really important is to know what type of learner you are. So I will link down below a quiz of the type of learning style that you are and that way you can do it and figure out how you learn best. This might influence the type of study methods that you choose to use in vet school. For reference, I'm very much a visual learner and a slightly auditory learner, so a lot of my styles are based on that. But with that being said, there are some classes that I felt like I just needed to study a certain way for based on how the prof presented content or the way the lecture slides were set up. So you guys can go figure out what type of learning style you are and we will jump right into into the study methods that I feel like did not really work for me. Oh, before we get started, if you guys like this video and you wanna see more videos about my journey through vet school and what it's like to be a student vet learning online, make sure you give this video a like and please feel free to subscribe, it means a ton to me. We are so close to 500 subscribers and I'm just shocked at how fast this channel has grown and how many wonderful students and future vets that I've been able to talk to through this. So okay, self promo over, let's jump into the tips that I feel like were a waste of my time in my my first year. So in undergrad, I would try and retype all of my notes from the professor's lecture slides and put them into a Word document. And that was the way I started taking notes in my first year of vet school. However, I realized very quickly that this was not gonna be possible because there was just not enough time in the day to rewrite all of my lecture slides. When you have eight different lectures in a day for seven different subjects, you just simply can't keep up with the amount of content that is being thrown at you. And I honestly found it impossible to type out all of my lecture notes. So that's when I switched to saving my lecture notes onto my computer and then annotating them as the professor was lecturing. This not only kept me focused during lecture, but I found out very quickly that the professors make their lecture slides for a reason and all of the important concepts that you need to know are on those lecture slides. So retyping them out was pretty pointless. Another thing that I found didn't really work for me in first year of vet school was studying like I did in undergrad. And what I mean by that was studying for tests specifically. In vet school, you are thrown so much content and all of the content tends to build on one another. In undergrad, I would study for a test and then I would forget about that stuff and never think about it again. But in vet school, you can't do this. So I really had to shift my study habits to go from completely memorizing to actually understanding the concepts. With that being said, there are some things that you are just going to need to memorize in vet school, like your cranial nerves or what a QRS complex is. But with that being said, being able to understand concepts and actually apply them to certain situations makes your life 10 times easier when you're studying for tests and exams down the road. Okay, so now that we've talked about two study methods that I feel like didn't really work for me in my first year of vet school, let's jump straight into the study methods that did work and really allowed me to be successful in first year. Okay, so the first class that we're going to talk about and the study method that relates to it is anatomy. I feel like people either love or hate anatomy. I personally really enjoyed it. And one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it was because I think I'm a very visual learner. So going to dissections and seeing pictures of dissected images just made sense in my brain. I also found that anatomy was a lot of memorization. You had to learn different nerve pathways. You had to learn which blood vessels connected to other blood vessels. And while you did have to identify them on certain specimens, by memorizing generally how 
an animal's body system should be laid out. I found it a lot easier when I was actually in the dissections and when I was doing our bell ringers at the end of the year. So there are two key things that I used when I was studying for anatomy, one of them being diagrams. Diagrams were my best friend in anatomy. Like I said, because I'm a very visual learner, having pictures that I could go in and label myself or isolate certain muscles really allowed me to understand the concepts and really memorize where certain anatomical features were in the body. Also, I found these diagrams really nice to look at and it just made me want to study them. So that was also a bonus. The other thing that I found really useful in anatomy was that our professor would actually put out dissection videos prior to our own dissections. I really enjoyed watching these videos because I could visualize what the dissection was going to be like, or I could visualize certain body systems before I even got into the lab. Like I said, visual learner. So watching those videos or even watching other videos on YouTube really helped me grasp concepts and figure out where certain features in the body were. I also used these videos as study tools. So if there was a muscle that I had a hard time finding in my own dissection, I would go back to videos that my professor had posted or videos that I found on YouTube where they were isolating that specific muscle. And I would screenshot the video and then I would annotate on the video that this was this certain muscle. This is how you find it. This is what it's relative to. So that when I was actually going back through my studying, I could visualize where that muscle was on the body. So that is the first half of anatomy is figuring out where muscles, nerves, and blood vessels are in the body. And then the second half of anatomy is figuring out what nerves innervate what muscles, what blood vessels supply which tissues. And the way that I studied for this was that as we went through our dissections throughout the year, I would make master tables where I would put all of the muscles, all of the nerves, and all of the blood vessels that we learned from day one to the very end. And I would make little notes about them, like what tissues they supplied or what muscles they innervated. This made it really easy when I went back at the end of the year to study for my final because I had all of my information in one place. I did find anatomy to be a lot of memorization and I think that was why I liked it so much. But even though it seems like such a large amount of content, it is definitely doable if you break it down into certain body systems. Okay, let's move on to the second class that I studied completely different for and that is physiology. Along with anatomy, physiology was one of my heaviest courses in first year and there was so much information that looking at it at the beginning of the year, I felt really overwhelmed. The good thing about physiology though is that it is broken down into different sections that you learn throughout the year. However, because there is so much content that's being thrown at you, it is literally impossible to memorize every single little detail unless you have a photographic memory, which I clearly don't. So that's unfortunate. That's why I found it so important to actually understand concepts in physiology rather than just memorizing facts because if there was a big picture topic that I didn't understand I found it really hard to move on to other sections in physiology so the main way that I studied for physiology and kept on top of my notes was making study guides for every lecture some professors were really good and they actually provided study guide questions or review type questions that I could go through my lectures and answer those questions and make a study guide that way but for professors who kind of just lectured and didn't provide any study aid, I would actually go back through the lectures and make my own review questions. Making one page study guides for each lecture was what really kept me on top of the material. By limiting my study guides to one page front and back, it really allowed me to go back through the lecture and pick out the important information and kind of brush over the information that wasn't going to be super important. And I feel like this really helped my studying because one, it made me more efficient when I was studying because I really focused on the main concept and the things that I felt like we were going to be tested on. But it also allowed me to grasp those concepts better because I had less concepts that I had to grasp in general. These study questions acted like active recall questions, which is a new method that I'm trying this year for all my classes. So I will keep you updated on that as I go through the year. Okay, I do want to say a little side note. I don't want you to think I have my life together that much and that I actually did keep on top of all of my lecture notes because I got to finals and I was panicked because there had been some lectures that I hadn't looked at since I literally did them in class. Don't think I kept on top of my stuff at all times because that was not the case. But when I did, I found the study guides to be super useful. Okay, so that's physiology and how I studied for it in a nutshell. Now let's move on to the third and final class we're gonna talk about today, as well as the third and final study method we're going to go over. 
So clinical medicine was actually one of my favorite classes in first year because it was so hands-on. You couldn't really study for this like you would for anatomy or physiology because this whole class was all about going through physical exams or learning how to suture. So my study methods for this class were completely different than the other two we've previously talked about. This class gave me a chance to practice my clinical skills and that's why it was one of my favorites because it actually felt like you were learning things that you would be doing as a vet. However, because things were so hands-on, it was so important for me to practice these things so that they turned into muscle memory by the end of the year. Also, because I didn't study for clinical med like I did some of my other classes, I found it super important to actually schedule off time in my calendar to practice these things. There were some weeks where I was like, oh, I have a break here, I'll just practice my sutures, and I wouldn't put it in my calendar, and surprise, surprise, I would get busy and I wouldn't do it. And by busy, sometimes I mean I would watch Netflix. So that's why I found it so important to actually block off time in my schedule where I was gonna practice suturing or where I was gonna practice physical exams. At the beginning of the year, it took me a long time to even just get through a physical exam or to do one full suture pattern. But the more you practice these things, the easier it gets. And like I said, it almost turns into muscle memory so that by the end of the year, I could spend less and less time practicing because I was getting more and more efficient at what I was doing. The one component of this class that I did study like a normal class was normal values for physical exams. At the beginning of the year when I was going through physical exams, I would take a heart rate and then I would be like, okay, great. What does that mean? Because in my head, I hadn't remembered the normal parameters of what a typical heart rate in a cow is or what the typical rest rate of a dog was. So I would recommend for this class is making a chart or making a list or however you want to study it of typical reference ranges for each different species. That way, once you're doing the physical exam, and you get a heart rate, you can figure out if the animal is tachycardic or bradycardic or if it was completely normal. But like I said, if you don't have those reference ranges, then you're kind of like, okay, great, that's a number. Now what? The other thing I will say is for learning suturing, I found watching videos of other people doing it super helpful because like I said, visual learner and being able to mimic what other people were doing really got the concept stuck in my head and allowed me to get better at my own suturing. So that's something else I would recommend is if you're not provided with suturing videos when you're learning, definitely turn to YouTube and watch some of the videos on there because I found that really made the patterns stick in my head. So there you have it. There are three different study methods that I used for three different classes in my first year of vet school. I hope you guys got something useful out of this video, whether it's a new study method or even just tips for a certain class that you're going to be going through in first year. Like I said, everyone studies differently, so really go out there and try different methods and find out what is going to work best for you and your own study habits. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but vet school is very overwhelming and it's very easy to fall behind, so don't feel like all vet students have their life together at all times because, like I said, I definitely don't. But in a perfect world, I would study like this for all of my classes and I would stay on top of everything and I would get great marks. So that would be the dream, but here we are. Either way, I did find those study methods to be really helpful and they were ways for me to really learn the concepts from first year and be able to transfer them over to now second year. If you guys have any study methods that you feel like are very beneficial, that you feel like I should try, please let me know down below. Like I said, I could use all the help I could get. So I think that's it for this video. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!